and welcome again uh, to another PD chat show uh, live tonight at 8.30, uh, virtually on the nose. Uh, we'll just give a few more seconds while people just log on. Um, but just before we do, um, if you are listening, uh, if you're new to this, please uh, like the Facebook page, Palace Drum Clinic. Uh, also go to the website, palacedrumclinic.com as well. There we are, under the arm. Um, if you're watching this on replay, please press uh, in the comments below, hashtag replay, and obviously you can comment there, we'll be able to see your comments as well. Also head over to the Palace Drumming Club, which is our interactive um, site on Facebook, uh, on our group, and actually you can actually do um, have a chat with guys and everything else so again welcome to uh, another pd count uh, oh, sorry i just done the thing. pd chat show there we go i'll get myself confused there's been so many weeks uh, so um again i'd like to say a big thank you to our resident panel of pete um pete cater and rob bryant say hello guys hello hi everyone they look so enthusiastic today, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> and also our special guest, um, he's artist relation to uh, DW Gretsch LP, uh, he'll tell you all about it later on. Um, but Mr Dave Phillips, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Matt. It's, uh, it's a real honour to be here and uh, it's very kind of you to invite me. So thanks very much and looking forward to it. Our pleasure, our pleasure. So obviously you may have worked out today, um, it's... Um, we usually always to start with like an open discussion between between the panels and our guests, and obviously we've got Dave on tonight. So Dave, I want to come to you first. Um, the question is obviously because a lot of people do not actually know um, what this actually like, uh, role involves as artist relations. So what actually do you do as an artist relation? Right. Well, I, I let me just start by giving you a, a bit of background. So I started at Pearl Drums, uh, looking after marketing and artist relations. Uh, and after six years, I went freelance, and for the last 14, 15 years, I've been working for DW Drums doing artist relations, and uh, five and a half years ago, they acquired Gretsch and Latin Percussion and Ovation Guitars, uh, and actually last year, Sling Slinger and Drums as well. Um, so my role, uh, certainly since they acquired the new brands, um, I've been working full-time artist relations for, for DW and if you put you know, Gretsch LP and DW together, that's a lot of drummers. In, in fact, I was working it out today, it's probably nigh on 2,000 artists. Blimey. Um, and in theory, at any time, any, all of them could contact me and say, we're doing a gig, and we need gear X, Y, and Z. Uh, if that happens, then it would be serious meltdown time. <laughs> um, it's funny, actually, with the exception of certain times of the year, uh, it's a fair sort of flow of requests. So to answer your question, um, a large part of my role on the artist relations side is looking after artists on tour. Um, once you're an endorsee, uh, we have backline all over the world and it's my job to sort of make sure that the backline is there for artists when they want it. Uh, and uh, Rob will tell you, but having backline support when you're a professional drummer is a complete game changer. Um, if you're on tour, I mean, DW, it's pretty fair to say that you know, we have probably the strongest backline support in the world. And, you know, we, we have companies from, you know, Russia through to Chile, Brazil, you know, all over Europe, um, Far East. Uh, and somebody will contact me saying, I'm doing a tour uh, and the, we can't fly our kit over. Can you supply me a kit? Uh, and that's where my role kit, uh, large part of my role is involved in organising that. Uh, I mean, I can get into to more detail, but, um, you know, some, you know, in order for me to do my job, then I need, obviously, the rider from the drummer. Uh, I need to know when, when it needs to be there, the address, the contact of that person, the tour manager's details. Uh, uh, and it's got to be rock solid because, you know, we're shipping around gear that's worth a lot of money. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm relying on the drummers to give me good information. 
Uh, and I could be liaising with the drum tech, the tour manager, it could be the concert promoter, the festival. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly in, in the touring season and, you know, in the festival season, uh, I could be juggling, you know, a hundred spinning plates, kits all over the place. It, it's a real logistical challenge to, to be able to do that. So, you know, looking after backline is, you know, one of the things I do during the touring season. Um, I'm also there as, you know, a support and a lending ear for all our artists. Um, I was thinking the title, it says it in the title, Artist Relations, Relations. So, you know, it's working with people and, you know, on DW, we say, you know, it's a family. The, all our endorsees are part of the family and, you know, we have great friendships. Uh, we don't just talk drums, you know, we, we, we genuinely, you know, are good friends with so many of the people that play our drums. Um, and then, you know, so providing support for them, whether they're doing drum clinics, uh, it, it could be they're going into a studio, they need, need help there. Uh, and actually, I have another role, and that's organising sort of the marketing in terms of sort of organising interviews. So somebody might be coming over on tour and I can get them interviews in magazines. Um, and then... The other element to what I do, uh, and I'm quite old school on this. Um, tell me if I'm rambling on too long, but no, no, it's interesting. It's interesting. Keep going. Um, so I go to a lot of concerts, uh, and I'm talking, you know, a really serious amount of, of live concerts, 50, 60 a year, and that's including more than a dozen dozen festivals. Um, and uh, you know. I'm there as representative of the brand and the our endorsees absolutely love it when somebody turns up and shows an interest and hangs out and talks drums and gear and music. Um, and, you know, just is a representative of, of the brand and, and shows an interest. So we, we, I'm the face of the company. Um, and the added bonus is that, uh, and I know we'll come onto this a bit later, that I also do professional photography. So, you know, I go out and I take photos of, of the drummers um, and we use it for our social media, for advertising. So I'm creating loads of content for the company. Uh, and it, it, it's, you know, it's very few people actually go out and photograph drummers because, you know, we're, we're the guys at the back. It's always the singer and, you know, so many, so many guys I work with, you, you know, the only photographs I've got of them is taken by me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, a, a kind of funny story for you was, um, uh, I was, I went out to meet Nigel Olsen with Elton John, uh, and it was a big stadium and, you know, band comes on and, you know, you have first three songs in the pit, uh, and there's a crowd of, 20 paparazzi all around Elton John at one side of the stage and there's just me in the middle photographing the drummer <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you know so few people photograph drummers and I'm just one of those guys and uh, a lot of you know most people are really grateful that actually I could I can it helps everybody it helps them it helps the company uh, and it helps for most drummers Definitely. Well, thank you ever so much for that. And a couple of thank yous for people watching at home as well. Uh, we have uh, Mike Tubman. We've got some regulars keep coming back. Thank you very much for supporting this. Uh, Elizabeth Sharon, Tom Lang, uh, Rob Clark, Darren Newden, uh, Ian Warren, Ken, uh, Kenneth Everett, uh, Josh Holmes, Martin Ollie, Paul Bates, Brian, uh, Della Musica, uh, Matthew Devonish, Andrew Thomas, Eduardo Herter, um, Vicky Bailey, uh, Louis uh, Zawala, uh, from drummer, Ian Stock, Andrew Vincent, and Sophia Morris. Loads, guys. Thank you ever so much again. So, say hello. Um, remember, if you want to ask a question to obviously a uh, special guest, Dave, or obviously any of us as well, please put actually uh, in, in the comments as well. Um, oh, Gain Armatist uh, can never have enough drum photos. Well, we can never have that. So, <laughs> I agree. Uh, and Liz Whitehead, hello. Nice, thanks for watching. Uh, Matthew Davis, good evening, guys. and great with it. Um, so, thank you for um, that, that basically uh, very detailed, obviously, because a lot of people actually just think you just turn up, have the drums, and then see you later. Um, but obviously that's that relation side of it. Thank you for clearing, uh, making that nice and clear for everyone. Um, Pete, I'd like to come to you for this next question. Um, what, 
what, what do you actually expect as like or, or help from the endorsers and and does it help um that obviously when choosing arrangements uh there's like that artist relation side of it uh it's to, to me uh, any affiliation with a company is all about the personal relationship that you have uh with uh with, with the you know the, the people um who, who you're, you're interacting with and and you know it's great to have Dave here. He's one, he's one of the kind of legends of the artist relations scene. And okay. I think you should also give, give a bit of a shout out to some of the other people who are out there who serve so many of us so well. You've got Tina Clark at Zildjian. Uh, you've got George Frederick, who's been practically everywhere. He's now at Natal, of course. Uh, you've got Mel Stewart at uh, my team, the British Drum Company. Uh, and it's, you know, sometimes, the life of a traveling musician is is not as much fun as people think it is. They think it's all glamour all the time. Sometimes it can get a bit lonely. And if you have that friendly face from the drum company uh, who just kind of turns up and gives a damn, is it, you know, is everything okay? Have you got what you need? Right. Uh, it really, it, it really is. It, it's about, like so much of the music industry, to me, it all hinges upon that magic quality, which is rapport. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, some, some other great artist relations people out there. Uh, you've got Martin Potts, uh, and of course, I know he's not affiliated to a drum company as such, but of course the legend is Yard. And no, we, yeah. We've got this whole great squad of people. And you know, even if you're not with their brand or one of their brands, um, you're always pleased to see them. And, and, you know, if, if, if you're feeling down, they'll take you and buy you a cup of coffee. And, and sometimes it's just as simple as that. Obviously, having great instruments to play and to feel valued by an instrument company and, and you know, an instrument company who actually promote you um, is, is, is a really special thing, too. Um, but again, like so many things, it's the personal relationships that make this stuff tick. Yeah. You know, that, that make it all kind of feel like you're you're part of uh, a, a, a big global family of people, um, and, and you know you you can go to any drum show uh, festival anywhere in the world, and you know you're going to see your friends. Sometimes you just bump into them in airports, yeah. and and it's like this kind of this sort of global party that uh, that you know it just kind of keep. It, it, keeps on the you know the, the, the old train keeps on rolling all the time and and as I say it's a, it's a very it's a very special thing to be a part of good excellent thanks for that Pete um a couple of highs again uh AJ Brussel uh Hugo Loudon uh Judy Parker Sarah Marsh and uh, the TPO um Sam Ryle uh Sharon Roll uh Gaynor Donald Williams hello and obviously I forgot to say hello to my mum and dad um so uh and Rob Case hello just joined us um fantastic um yeah remember guys put your comments uh or your questions uh or even so like, you know how you um perceive different companies and how maybe you've been approached uh or you are endorsed by different companies it's like how to guess uh, hi Catherine Arledge um so yeah um and also just put them in the comments and we'll read them out to ever so um rob you're gonna be a bit biased now because obviously you are wearing the t-shirt i am literally which they've but, got me so what can yes. i say <laughs> but but we um we've had many conversations uh you know about this um but you know what attracted yeah. you to basically obviously we know you like your drums and it's like the sound that they make but it, it is is dave the part of basically you going over to dw dave is one of the yes definitely without a doubt um because again without talking about other companies and things, but you know, with, uh, the company I was with before was always good and the drums were great, but the relationship between me and their artist guy, well, there wasn't any, cause it was hard to establish one, even though they had a great product. Um, and I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to do a um, contact Don Lombardi, um, DW and go over and do the drum channel, which is their educational um, website, which is right next door to where the factory is. Um, and uh, while I was there, I was with the said company and um, they kind of let me down on the kit that they supplied for me to do my hour show that I was doing as the guest. And at that point, Don said, I'm not going to pill for you or rob you, but could you fancy coming to look at the factory? And, um, and he was such a lovely guy. He was helping me taking the drums out of the case. He could have just come in and said, hi, yeah, and I'm Don. I'll see you in an hour. You get yourself ready. But he was actually taking the drums out of the cases with me and helped me head the kit. 
um, and I had a certain idea about a pedal that this company weren't so interested in. And I'm not joking, he went to the workshop and within half an hour, he said, what like this? And it w w wasn't that difficult for him to do, but it was something that I've been talking about. And I can't think of the guy's name now, but he came back with the pedal and introduced himself. So I think you mean like this. Was and it I was Rich like, Sikra? Oh. The what, sorry? Was it Rich Sikra? Yes, yeah. Rich. And I, I was speechless. And uh, the next day we went around the factory and I just got a really good feel for the place. Um, he, of course, he knows everyone by name and I could feel the relationship between him and everybody. I went to Candyland, played the drums, found something that was speaking to me, a range that I liked. And I was there for four days. And every night he took me out, him and his wife took me out and my girlfriend at the time to dinner, looked after us. Um, treated me like he would treat anyone else. He was on about, you know, I do this with Neil Pert all the time. And I was thinking, my goodness, I'm sat on the same neat seat as Neil Pert. This is great. He could easily have been a lesser known drummer, just said, okay, well, there's your, there's your hotel room, da, 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 da. But he just looked after us for the whole time. And by the end of it, and I kept going back to Candyland, of course, while I was there. And by the end of it, I said, look, Don, I'm gonna have to sit down in your big office and talk to you about a deal. Because I, I, but one thing you must promise me is that you have got gear in every territory. And he said, Rob, don't even think about it. He said, that's all fine. Um, and I said, I've just got such a good vibe from working with you. And he introduced me to Dave. And I remember I was touring with Susie at the time. And I just needed one simple thing at the start. Well, it was the drum kit, which he got me. But the other thing I needed in the rehearsal room was um, a bass drum head, ported bass drum DW head. Mm. And we made the call, the drum tech made the call something like three in the afternoon. I turned up 10 o'clock the next day and it was there. And the same tech had been working with me with the other company and we were told like a week before it would get to me. And it was just crazy. And every time I spoke to Dave, he said, Rob, don't panic. Cause I still had that hanging around from the last company. The Dave, are you sure you can do this? He said, Rob, relax, I can get you this equipment, it'll be fine. And Dave come to clinics, he's come to different workshops and stuff and to gigs. And unfortunately I couldn't get him into the Royal Albert Hall, Dave. I'm still, still sorry about that. <laughs> You made the trip, and I'm, I'll, I'll have to buy a bottle of champagne for that. It was no my tour manager just wouldn't let you in. Roger was like, I was gutted, but anyway, it happens, it happens sometimes. I'm so um, sorry because you made the trip and everything. And I said to my wife yesterday, I said, if Betty's gonna have a go at me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, because I would have hopefully been in one of the books, that would have been great. Um, but yes, so someone like Dave, like Pete said, all of what Pete said, it. it you know, everyone thinks it's showbiz, it's the magazines, it's this, that and the other, but sometimes a face when that comes around the corner when you've been on the road for God knows how long and smiles and said, you okay? And like Pete said, do you want to come for a coffee? Because we've got up at Frankfurt once. She said, come on, let's go and get a coffee. And I was like, have you got time? He said, yeah, of course I've got time. Mm. And just those little moments amongst all the other great stuff having the kit there when we ask him and all that, the other pr personal stuff is really what makes the difference. And as I said, I was with the other company for about 10 years and um, it was very difficult. So being with DW, I didn't have to panic anymore. And when I gave any spec to Dave or my tech did, it was always done. But I, used, I usually email myself, don't I, Dave? I like to do it straight to you yeah. rather yeah. than go through anybody. And um, I, I just think wonderful. just picking up on what you're saying is um, the first thing I'll say is I'm a drummer. Uh, and I play the drums for a very, very long time. So... I know when, you, when something breaks, I know firstly what, what it is you need. But if somebody asks me something, I know you need it. So that there's always a deadline. There's, you know, uh, you know, even if the smallest part, part breaks, it's a bit like having a can without a can opener. If, you know, a spring breaks on your pedal, you're, you're stuffed. So, you know, I do take my job very seriously. And... You know, I look at it from, if somebody asks me for help, then you need help, uh, which means I do make myself available. Um, I wouldn't say 24 seven, but seven days a week. Um, and, you know, I've had drummers throw some pretty amazing challenges at me. Um, I had uh, Royal Bloods last year, gave me two days notice to get them a kit in Croatia. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, I've had uh, another drummer who I'm not going to name who rang me up on a Saturday night asking for a kit in that the Sunday morning in Barcelona. Uh, and I did it. So really? I did it. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, you've just 
I'd like to think what I do is not rocket science. You've just got to be organized, level-headed, uh, know your gear. Um, I mean, the amount of times, uh, you know, I, I get a, 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 somebody contact me, a drum tech, for example, uh, and they'll describe a part for me, for me and, you know, I'll have to work out what they want, excuse me, uh, or even design stuff to get over problems. You know, I help build kits with, with, with people as well. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Do you know, um, one question I've got for you, so it's my personal, do you know how many kits you've actually got in the UK available for at any time? Yes, yeah, I've got a complete list. So if you, uh, if you were an endorser and said, you know, I only need a kit in Glasgow or Manchester or uh, down in Bristol, um, I've got a list of all the gear that, that's available. Uh, and uh, in total, uh, just on DW or is it DW Gretchen LP or? Uh, well, can, can you slight itemize and can you slight, you've got X meta DW, X meta Gretsch? Have you um, no, I could give you a rough note. I could give you exact numbers if, if I got my spreadsheet out, but. Uh, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm a, there must be, Christ, 50, 60 DW kits in the UK, maybe more. Right. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, at least, at least 60 drum kits. Yeah. Uh, I mean, DW is the go-to backline brand. Um, you'll find with uh, uh, even, you know, endorsees of other companies, uh, they'll give to, on their rider, they'll have a number one choice and they'll have a number two choice. I can pretty much guarantee every drummer, number two choice is always DW. Uh, and that's because it's so consistent. They know what they're going to be getting. Yeah. Uh, it might not be their choice because, you know, they're endorsed by Tamar or Sony or what have you. Um, but, you know, D DW is, is the industry benchmark. Uh, and it's, you know, it's an honour to, to work on that brand for, for that reason. Well, you had them all over Brazil, Dave, because that's usually, when I've been there before, it's been like, no, sorry, it's a no-go, we don't deal. You know, went to you, went to Scott, boom, yeah. got exported. You know, everywhere we went in Brazil, DW yeah. hit. Fantastic. It, it is global and, and Gretsch is catching up with two, you know, um, actually when we inherited Gretsch, you know, almost six years ago, the back line, you know, I inherited was not in great shape. Uh, and we've invested hundreds of thousands in back line across the Europe. Um, we must have more than a hundred Gretsch kits across Europe now. Great. And so the Gretsch artists, you know, getting pretty good support when they're touring as well. That's brilliant. Uh, a couple of hellos. Philip Monta, hello. Uh, Dave Patrick says, uh, evening, I saw him late. Don't worry, you're here. That's the main thing. Darren Thrower, Andrew uh, Downs, Jim Argy. Uh, AJ Russell's just basically put, I've heard great things about Dave from friends who are through Gretsch. Excellent drums and rep. There we go. And it, two claps as well. There we go. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and Alex Willock. Um, question, uh, Dave. Um, it says, question for Dave from Martin Ollie. I've recently bought a full set of new DW5000 hardware. I thought I was getting American-made stuff, but they had labels on which said made in China and came as a big surprise to me. I was still impressed with the quality, but is all DW hardware made there? Not all DW hardware. Uh, some of the stands are made in, in, in the Far East. Um, I think the pedals, yeah, the pedals are definitely made at, at the USA factory. Um, but some of the, char the hardware, it, yeah, comes from the Far, far East. The important thing to say is the quality control. Uh, you know, anything with a DW branding on it, DW would not accept anything less than 100%. So it may be made, you know, in the Far East, but it doesn't mean it's of any lesser quality. Uh, DW, the factories they use, uh, they will be monitoring very carefully to make sure that they're up to the DW standard. But there we are. I hope that's answered your question, Martin. Um, hello, Mick Driver uh, and Richard Tottenham. Hello, guys. Nice to see you. Well, nice, nice to, for you to see us. Uh, that's another thing. Um, again, guys, um, if you want to so put all your comments and everything else in the comments, uh, so we've got wealth of knowledge in here. Um, uh, and there's loads of stories to tell as well, which obviously you'll hear later on. Um, 
uh, all one from the blimey. As soon as I said that, everyone just jumps on the bandwagon. So, uh, again, I said DW all the way. I have two collector's kits and love them. Can't imagine what it must be to be an endorsement and have that sort of support. Not as for me, as I'm a bit late to the game. But how do you come up? Uh, how do you? How? But how do up and coming drummers uh, get their endorsements? There we are. Sorry, this is a. Uh, yes, Marty. So how how does this, this is another thing? Obviously, you deal with sort of endorsements and stuff like that. How do people get endorsements? Because a lot of people you see go, oh, I've got endorsements here, I've got endorsements there, kind of thing. Is it an endorsement or is it just a good deal? Um, no, it's very much an endorsement. Um, the getting getting a DW endorsement or Gretsch or LP, uh, the bar is very high, and Generally speaking, you know, if I would say to drummers, you'll know when the time is right to get an endorsement. Um, we get, actually we get hundreds of applications. Uh, and it, you know, it's people that want to play your brand, but it's a very careful measured decision when we bring somebody on board. Um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's a family thing and, you know, we do, take uh, great pride in sort of making sure that the people that represent the band brand are, you know want to work with us and we want to work with them yeah um, so in, in terms of how to get an endorsement um, you know you have to look at yourself and, and think you know what's my profile am I influential you know and what kind of venues I'm playing you know uh, what can I bring to the table uh, and it's, we don't just sign, you know, stadium selling sort of acts, you know, it, it could be that, you know, in a particular genre, you're, it could be like death metal or jazz or whatever it happens to be, you know, you could be an educator. So uh, you've really got to be uh, genuinely ask yourself the question, what can I bring to the table? What can I bring to this company? Uh, what can I do for them? And what can they do for me? Mm. Uh Pete, I've got a question for you. Um, you've obviously had a few endorsements in your, in your time. Um, did you go um, looking for those endorsements, or did you? They come up. Um, well, my 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 history uh, in terms of affiliation uh, where drum companies are concerned uh, is actually something that, comparatively speaking, came along quite late in life. I, mean, I know this came up the other week because the old bass drum head is here in the corner of uh, my shop. Yep. Uh, yep. I did have a, an affiliation with the UK distributors of Slingerland when I was 18. Because, um, you know, I was a young drummer and I had a little bit of uh, notoriety at local and national level. And then nothing until I got um, through Chris Wright, who used to be a drum right in uh, Reading, um, and I'm going back about 20 years now, and uh, he uh, made arrangements uh, with me to uh, get an artist deal with DW, which was a, a Blue Pearl uh, drum set that a few people might remember that I used for many, many years. Um, but the first time I had a, a full-blown, uh, you know, formal endorsement arrangement with a drum company, uh, was behind me uh, was when I was with Premier, and that didn't come around until 2012, uh, and at a time when I was actually 49 years old. So I know a lot of drummers, young guys out there, uh, looking at this and looking at the industry, thinking, oh, "I've got to get a deal. I've got to get a deal. I've got to get an affiliation with a, 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 a drum company." But sometimes, if you just play the long game. And, mm. and go, go about your your, uh, your your art and your craft and, and developing yourself in the industry. Now, I know I get lots of young players, you know, students, and, and just you know, just people I know and bump into saying, how do, how, how do I get a deal? How do I get a, a relationship uh, with, with a, a drum company, a cymbal company? I mean, I've been with Zildjian um, since, uh, for over 20 years now, and that, that, that was actually... Uh, it's a long story for another day. That that, that was actually because of Louis Belson. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, what I always say to the young guys is I say, don't send unsolicited emails. You know, go, go to any uh, 
uh, go to any uh, any of the drum shows, and you'll see like uh, uh, all kinds of young guys carrying like iPads around, and they're all chasing off the Norbert from Minor, saying, "Do you want to see a video of me playing?" And like, he really doesn't. Uh, and what I always say to them is, you get on with developing your artistry and trying to climb the career ladder, and you know the drum companies, the people who have influence and make those kind of decisions, they'll know about you anyway, once exactly you get to right. a certain level. So, and that, I mean, that's what, that's what happened to me with Premier. Um, yeah. I went to the London Drum Show uh, in 2012 at Olympia, and I, I, I've got a feeling that there was a lot of drum company interest at the time, uh, just because of some of the things that I've done um, and, and was continuing to do. And I hadn't been there uh, five minutes that I was I, I was stopped by, by Craig Buckley, who was the general manager of Premier at the time. And he said, you know, come with us. And it was like he got there first. And, but, you know, bear in mind, as I say, I was 49. I wasn't a young hotshot in a band that's in the charts or doing big festivals. So it's all about your personal development. And if you handle that in the right way and, you know, I, I, I hate to say this, but market yourself in the right kind of way. Then you know, drum companies are going to want to talk to you. They're going to want to do business with you. They're going to they're, mm -hmm. they're going to value an affiliation with you. And and and, and this so it has to be an entirely mutual and symbiotic relationship between yeah. the artist and the company. You yeah. know, it, it's it's not a oh what what gear can I get? It's like well what how how are we going to help one another? What yeah. what can we do for one another? And, and that's how the whole thing works. It comes back to that magic word that I've already used so many times this evening, and that's rapport. It's about how you deal with people. I know yeah. great players, you know, really talented players who drum and cymbal companies just simply will not touch because they, you know, they don't care to take care of business in the right kind of way. They don't, you know, handle, they don't look after equipment properly. They, you know, maybe have some, uh, shall we say, personal idiosyncrasies. <laughs> um, and, and and you know it, you know you can you can be a great player, but I, can I? I know I'm I'm really verbally on here, but I'm just going to say this because it's really yeah. really important. Do it, do it, do it. It's such an important thing. And I'm going to say it once, and I'm going to say it if I never say it again. <laughs> once you get past a certain level of ability, okay. Once you've got your stuff together on the drums, it doesn't matter what kind of player you are what kind of genre of music you're involved in. Once you reach a certain level of attainment, a uh, certain level of ability on the instrument, once you get past that, it becomes uh, very much an aesthetic choice by the listener. So, oh, yeah, he's a great player, but not my kind of thing. And, and you know, different people will look at different great players and say, I like that guy, I don't like that guy, that guy leaves me cold, I'm ho-hum about that guy. But they're all great players. So it becomes very much a subjective appraisal. But if you're a dickhead, everybody knows. And there's, yeah. you know, that's black and white. So you can be the world's best player, but if you're not a good human being, then as I say, forget it. Uh, you know, not, not a chance. Um, yeah, I just wanted to pick up something you said on that, uh, Pete. <laughs> uh, and that is timing is really important. Uh, not just you know being a drummer, but um, as a story of somebody that we brought on board on Gretsch a couple of years ago. Um, they approached me and uh, they said, you know, we'd like to play Gretsch, and they sent sent me all their details, uh, and we were interested, but it just wasn't quite right. Uh, mm -hmm. And I said to them, I said, look, you know, just stay in touch. You know, it's looking good. Keep d doing what you're doing. Uh, and that, going back to what I said before, you'll know when the time is right. Uh, and a year later, this guy rang me up saying, I'm paying me a bone. I'm trying to come down and, you know, come to the gig. Uh, so I did. Uh, and I went along and uh, we, went, we, we actually went to dinner and... We didn't talk about endorsements once, not once. We just talked about drums and music and beer and sex and whatever it, whatever it was. Uh, and, you know, 
it just kind of made sense. And, and then he said to me, you know, well, you know, I've got a new gig. Uh, and that gig was a really, really good gig. Uh, and the next day I sort of sent an email over saying, well, actually, you know, I think things have moved on. Uh, and he applied and we brought him on board. Uh, and, but he was, he had sort of the patience to wait. Uh, and, you know, he, 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 we've actually had a, 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 other, some, some artists that have applied and got rejected. Uh, and, I've, uh, and I've said to them, look, you know, it's never a closed door, apply again. And we've had people that signed on the second, even third time. So time is quite important, you know, uh, careers change uh, and this is a very small industry. And uh, you know, uh, you, there's that saying, you meet people on the way up and you meet, meet them on the way down, <laughs> down sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, you, you know, you, you've got to think long-term and you know, be humble. And uh, I think uh, I, something that actually Rob said, but I'd like to think whether you're a famous, you know, stadium selling rock star or you're playing jazz clubs, I don't distinguish between them. I'll, they'll get the same level of service and access to me, whether, you know, regardless that they're, you know, we want to just work with those people. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, hello, Joel, uh, Gordon Keir and Bill Madison. Um, Darren Newton has actually put uh, wise words. Thanks, guys. Um, I'd just like to put my, um, my, my two penny worth in um, because Darren Newton has actually just popped up. Um, I've recently, literally in this past year or so, gone on to Pellwood Sticks. Uh, Darren's, uh, I've known Darren for a while now, and he's been pestering me. So, oh, yeah, you must try our sticks. And so like he keeps sending me stuff, sending me stuff. And I was going, they're great sticks, they're great sticks, but they're not, I, I can't, you know, for me, if, if I'm going to do something like the Bill Sanders practice pad, everyone knows that because I'm all over this, you know, this thinner version of this face um, is, is everywhere. Um, but it's like, you know, Darren was sending me stuff, he's like, lovely guy, he's like, you know, he's very helpful. And he said, well, well, what do you want? And I said, well, I want this stick with that on that one. He went, okay, and they came back and made it. And it was, for me, it was just like, played it, and I thought, this is most probably the best stick I want because you know they've they've gone out of the way to make something for me, um, and it's worked. Uh, and now I'm so happy. And then they'll basically ring Darren up. Have you got this? Over? Yeah, I'll send it through. And it's, it is that relationship building up the relationship. As as Pete and Dave and obviously Rob has actually said. So uh, I like to just to say on a personal level, thank you, Darren, for all the support you've given me as well. Because um, through uh, and obviously Palace Drum Clamp, you've uh, supported the, um, the the camp as well uh, through the through the clinic. Uh, so thank you, Darren, uh, for that support. So uh, that's another another one there for me. So thank you guys for letting me uh, ramble on for a second. Um, now we're coming on to a stage where obviously um, Dave, you meet a lot of uh, sort of people through through your life. So you said about drummers, like photographing drummers. Um, just behind you, I've just seen. Are they backstage passes behind you? They are indeed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and have you got just there? Because I think you've got thousands. <laughs> uh, yeah, do you know what? I started. I, I started making giant posters of them, uh, and after about six, I sort of gave up. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there's there's probably I don't know about fifty there, but uh, I've got hundreds, if not thousands, of them. Uh, and you know, a lot of people in the industry keep their passes and things, but uh, it's good memories. Really good memories. Oh, definitely. Um, obviously, the most memories that you have is obviously with your camera, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's. I, I mean, for me, it's 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 not just work. You know, I, I I get a real kick out of being able to take photos at live concerts. Uh, I've taught myself. Uh, and I think because I'm a drummer, it helps me be able to photograph drummers. Yeah. You know, I can mm. predict when somebody is going to hit a cymbal because, you know, I feel the music. Um, and, you know, I quite literally have photographed drummers from every possible angle that you could, could imagine. Um, but there's, you know, there's stage etiquette. Uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I want to get on stage or backstage or what have you. They're dangerous places. Uh, and, you know, I've had some accidents in my time going to concerts. Uh, and, 
you know, a lot of a lot of big shows now. There's 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 pyrotechnics and flamethrowers and um, compression cannons and you know, there's all sorts of wires and you know, a, a one one console actually fell through the bloody stage for Christ's sake. <laughs> um, oh my god! So, so you've got to know how to handle yourself. Um, even small things like when I go to concerts, I wear black. Yeah. So I'm not seen on stage. You know, just you know, you, you, it's, it's actually being respectful. You've got to be low profile, you know, to get the kind of access that I get, you know, the, the tour manager and the stage manager and the drummers and drum techs, they've got to be comfortable that they know that you're not going to do something stupid, basically. Yeah, and I suppose you rebuild that rapport up with all the, the produce, producers and it's like these, like, you know, people there as well, the backstage, the crew and everything else. Well, it works for you, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, and the great thing is, is that uh, I've got to say the drummers that get it, um, actually, if they, if, Ray Loser is an absolutely brilliant example. Uh, Ray, Ray and I are good mates and he absolutely loves my photography. Uh, and whenever I, I go to a concert, he, he goes, Dave, I want you standing right there next to me. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's funny because my kids always, play spot dad on tv <laughs> because I, i'm literally right center stage you know behind him uh but then it means i can get some absolutely bonkers wow photos um uh i'm just gonna share, share something with you this um, is the first for the pd's chat show and um, we're about to share a screen so yes. uh, i would say drum roll but that's a bit cliche but if uh, just, just grab the bear of sticks if you want to just give me one sec uh, yes. one sec <laughs> seven problems keep going <laughs> somebody doing a drum, drum roll there yes well it has me uh while we're doing that uh, hi uh mark mayock um Tom no. Lance, just like just that, if you're ready, but um, it says, "Hi, gang. Does Pete try to entice other endorsed uh, drummers to DW? Which I think that should be said to like, does Dave uh, try to entice? Um, that's Tom Lane. Um, oh, uh, Vladimir uh, Shubin. Hi, thanks for joining. Um, oh, here we go. Dave has shared the screen. Yes, he's on a Mac. So there we go. Look at this, guys. Okay. So that's a photograph of Ray Luzi at a Reading Festival. Can you see that? Yes, we can see yeah. it loud and clear. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ray had me right up on stage, uh, and he also played to the camera there as well. Um, but to get that sort of photo, you've got to have a real deep trust between yourself uh, and the drummer. Yeah. Um, and I think I've stopped sharing now. You um, have, yeah, we can yeah. see your face, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and, and, you know, there's a lot of drummers, you know, Brent Phipps with Slash, you know, he always has me up on stage and uh, you get those sort of wow photos. Um, and it's, it's what I call the best seat in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I try to do in my photography is um, show people the view that they would love to see. I always say, if you want to know what it's like to sit in front of 100,000 people, you know, I've got the photo that will show, bring that, you know, to, to people. Um, and, and it's exciting and it's fun. Is that what you called, uh, was it the first book, From the Drummer's Perspective? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, funny enough, I was going to call it The Best Seat in the House, uh, but there's loads of other books actually <laughs> called that. Uh, there's a lot of MPs that have written books called the Best Seat in the House. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was why I didn't, I didn't use that, that title. Um, That's fair enough. Uh, as I say, it's, have you got any more ones of um, some bizarre um, incidents on stage? Because I, I know, I know so reading, you know, flicking through your book, that um, there's some, some cracking photos in there. Yeah. You maybe um, know what I'm meaning. Um, um, well, what I'll do, um, so I'm going to share my screen again. Yeah. Uh, did that work okay? Yeah. That worked perfectly, yeah. Perfect. yeah great. Okay. So, is, can you see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so, again, this, so this photo here is the view that you don't get to see as a punter. Um, you know, this is, a, this is Download Festival before you know they get the doors open 
Um, and, you know, one of the things about my job, you know, I make sure that I get to know the stage managers so they're comfortable with me getting access to, to be able to do this. Um, so that's, you know, that's before uh, the, the gates open. Uh, this is same photo with, what, 70,000 people. Mm. Um, and again, it's that, that view that people, people don't see. Um, another photo from, from Download. Uh, I worked for many years. In fact, I signed Joe Jorgensen to Pearl Drums. Uh, and this was a photo of uh, Joey with a big riser going up in the air and a, he's, he's got a five points uh, aircraft seat he's strapped into. Um, so that was one of my early photos actually. Um, and then this is a fo another photo from book one. Um, this is with Eagles of Death Metal, drummer's called Gene Krautman. Uh, and I was side stage. Uh, and at the end of the gig, he just literally jumped up over his kit. <clears throat> uh, it's one of my favourite photos from my first book. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just in the moment, isn't it? Yeah, brilliant. Definitely. Uh, and, have uh, you, um, Rob, have you been photographed yet? Uh, no, I like just said there was an incident where I tried to get Dave in, but um, into the right. hall when I was there with Lorena, but... I wouldn't say his name, uh, but he wouldn't let me, uh, the stage manager wouldn't let him in. Uh, um, and yes. it's nothing. We'll sort that out next time though, Dave. Yeah, definitely. Um, this, is a, this is the cover of my first book. Um, and, and I'll tell you a little bit a story about it. It's, it's Scott Travis with Judas Priest. Uh, and the stage manager, um, who very sadly has passed away, this guy called Bomber. Um, and the stage manager was the drum tech so he kept on pushing me behind scott and saying oh, get up there and you know take photos so i got you know this unbelievable photos standing behind you know scott with all the, all the crowd wondering who the hell's that guy with the camera behind him um but it's that kind of access uh that you get those those sort of wow photos hmm. um uh, this, is, this, this is another one that I think, uh, this was, uh, I was working with Dave Grohl with them called Crooked Vultures. Uh, and, you know, we can all, you know, relate to that photo of that sort of, you know, in the moment, you know, screaming at the crowd. Yeah. It's, just, it's just, you know, it's that raw emotion of live concerts, isn't it? Yes, I do like the reaction of the bloke down in blue just behind the. Uh, there. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yes, this is very pleasant. <laughs> uh, and then just just one other photo. Well, in fact, a couple other photos. Um, this was when I was working with Muse uh, at Wembley Stadium, and you know, I, I took this photo again of the view before the crowd comes in. Actually, what Dom sees when he's sitting behind the kit. Um, and you can see, you know, the security there, and um, it's funny actually when you're at Wembley, it doesn't look so big from the stage. I don't know what it is, but uh, um, again, it's a it's a it's a pretty cool view. Uh, mm. And I'm just gonna one other funny photo. Well, it's a funny story I'm going to show you is this photo here. <clears throat> this was Vinny a piece with Heaven and Hell, um, and I use this photo, use this photo for a, a spoof Christmas card. Uh, and I superimposed my face over this, over Vinny there. Um, and uh, about a year later, I, I met a, fr a friend who'd never met me before. And the only photo he'd ever seen of me was that Christmas card with Vinny. Uh, and he, he thought I'd lost all my hair. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, that, that was quite funny. But uh, brilliant. Uh, so that was a few photos from, from my uh, my first book. Um, yeah. Have you got a favourite one from that book at all, or, or are they all your favourites? Uh, I love the photo of Jean jumping over the kit. Yeah. Um, I, I just think that's just unique, really. And um, I, I mean, there's a you know I, I photographed Neil Pert. Uh, in that book as well, and um, uh, the, the, uh, afterwards, the, the next tour I met Neil, and um, we were talking, and 
he, he signed he signed my book you know today you know i'm honored to be in your book i love your photography uh which is why i asked him to write the foreword for my next book nice yeah so uh, uh i'm i i i still kind of pinch myself that i i'm you know honored to work with these wonderful drummers and legends yeah well as i say it's you know it you know the guys that i you know i've had the fortune to meet um you know they've been absolutely sorry it's grateful i think it's a drummer thing isn't it i think someone i think uh, mike tubman said earlier it's like uh, drummers are the nicest guys um yeah. well, well we are i think we discussed this before a few weeks ago that you know we are we like to share things um you know Definitely. and also about sharing things another little plug there um next thursday is our second um master class a palace drum clinic master class online um uh, it's titled flams are your friends uh which uh, I, I i hold them dear to my heart because they are my friends um i'll be doing this one again after the success of last one um there is an event on the uh, facebook page uh, please go to it just to let going from the interested uh, and then i'll be in touch with all the details of how you can basically uh, log on and pay and so forth so that's next thursday um, so, uh, and that will be the, uh, I do believe that'll be the 2nd of, uh, of, of, I can't believe where it's gone, July, 2nd of July already, it's in, 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 in Day after my birthday, by the way. Day after nah. birthday, well, I'll <laughs> come to that, Rob, um, day after birthday, um, can we all basically give a massive drumming, um, congratulations, uh, I was going to do it at the end, but you've just brought it up, Rob. Rob will be a big number on the 1st of July, so can we welcome uh, Rob, uh, I can't welcome Rob, but um, he's going into the, uh, going from one category into the other in a tick box, yes, he's <laughs> Uh, he doesn't look it with that beard. Um, happy birthday, Rob. Cheers, guys. Uh, so I wish you happy birthday for Cheers. next uh, next Wednesday. Oh, yeah, have, a, a, have a great day. It's it's not as bad as you think. Oh, I'm looking forward <laughs> to it, honestly. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Um, but no, as I say, it's um, next Thursday. Um, but as I say, if, if you can't make it, drop me a message and um, I will see if we can repeat it if it becomes very popular anyway. So yeah, so it's uh, Flam to Your Friends. Um, go to the Facebook um, events uh, on the page uh, and go there. It's also on the website as well. Um, it'll be a great evening. All you need basically is a practice pad, a pair of sticks, um, but I will be so soon how to transfer Flams onto the kit um, using um, all the side, you know, some rudiments there so that's a little plug there thank you very much for um for that um um pete i'd like to come to you for a second um because um obviously you, you've, you've been so you you're talking about that timing kind of issue uh with the whole endorsements um is there any sort when you was a young guy if so it was only endorsements you thought oh do you know i wish i could basically have that um i think every young player uh you know, wants to see their picture in a, a, a drum magazine or a, 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 a drum catalogue or something like that. It's, it's one of those things. And, you know, I, I think if you say, oh, I don't, I'm not into all that, I think you're being a little bit, uh, a little bit economical with the truth. Every, you know, <laughs> one of, the, one of the, the great motivators, why you work hard, why you get good, um, is, is you know, the recognition that, uh, that you've achieved something. And that's not necessarily uh, equated in, in, in kind of money terms all the time. I mean, the kind of player that I wanted to be uh, when I was in my late teens, and there, there is uh, audio and video evidence of it on YouTube, I was trying to be something that didn't exist. I was, you know, I was, I was trying to play like, a, a, like some, some American player in his, in his 50s or something uh, back in the early 1980s. And, you know, the, the wind was just not blowing that way. And the, the, there were actually fewer opportunities to play that kind of straight ahead jazz and big band music at a professional level than there have been of more recent decades. Um, because all the great original players, you know, you have Ronnie Barrels, Kenny Clares, uh, Bobby Orr, um, and Ronnie Stevens, all those great guys who were the originators and the big names of that playing uh, in the UK were still very active and very much a presence on the scene mm -hmm. and there wasn't much of that music going on so i had to become a completely different kind of player in order to get out of uh, the local scene great though it was um but there wasn't that much jazz going on around birmingham at that time that that i, I could get involved in 
Uh, so I had to go off on a complete, a complete tangent and, and go and do play completely different types of music and you know, cruise ships and holiday centers and doing pantos at Christmas and, and you know, playing shows backing artists. Uh, and back then, that was the late 80s, we were playing for uh, people who have been big names in the 60s, um, and which I guess is the same now as the, the, the guys who are doing thing, things like Rewind, where they're playing for all the 80s artists. It's always been that nostalgia scene. And I, I went off on this nomadic, relatively unglamorous um, uh, journey for several years until I got enough money together to put a deposit on a flat in the outskirts of London and kind of start all over again and get closer to where I wanted to, to, to be, to where there was uh, um, more of the kind of music, uh, more of the kind of players, more of a center for what I wanted to do. Uh, and, and, you know, I was nearly 30 by the time I did that. So, so, so it was kind of a, it, it was a kind of a long-winded uh, route, but it, it, it was all valuable. That's the important thing, it was all valuable. But I, I had to, and this is something, again, I'm always saying to young players who aspire to be professional. When you're young, this is going to be done. It's exactly the opposite of what I was doing when I was a teenager. You've got to be whatever kind of player the industry wants you to be. Uh, and, you know, that for a, a teenager in the early 1980s wasn't playing like uh, an American big band drummer in, in his mid 50s or something. So you have to look which way the industry's facing. And, and it's really important. And this is part of the thing that will get you up the ladder and bring you to the attention of the drum companies and get these affiliations started. So you know, all these all these things are interconnected, and it, it's. Uh, I mean, sometimes you get lucky. You 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 just get in a band who gets in the charts. In the old days, would go on top of the pops, but most of the time you don't. You just have to, you know. Rob, you know this. I know you're a bit younger than I am, but you know this just as well. It's graft. You have to go out there, and pay your dues, play a lot a lot of music, play quite a bit of music that you don't like very much. <laughs> um, and just keep keep an eye on you know keep your eye on the prize. And, and yeah, keep, absolutely. You know. I, I would I would add to that is network. You yeah. know, go to, yeah. go to drum shows. You know, come and say hello. Um, yeah, totally. Keep, keep in keep in contact. Um, all all those things are, are really important. Uh, I, I mean, I, I go out and about to you know so many festivals and concerts. Uh, and you know, by doing that, I get to know you know who's who's out there, who's doing it, uh, who, who's on the pulse at the moment. Just as you said, Pete, you, you know, people, you know, come to your attention. Yeah, yeah, Tura. I think uh, Rob, same question to you. Is there? I know it's sort of diverse, but I want to get back to that in a second. Um, it, it was there, like when you were sort of obviously, you know, making your you know, way through the sort of the career it is. Um, was there sort of some of the, oh, I wish I had that endorsement? Well, you know, when I was younger, I obviously what Buddy Rich, Ian Pace, you know, Ringo, Joe Morello, we're all playing Ludwig, I want to play Ludwig, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so there's that romance, as we had with the vintage drum things last year, there's that romance of yeah. wanting to, to play something. Um, but really for me, as soon as I found Again, I won't say the company, but as soon as I found a kit I liked back when I was 18, maybe, you know, I, I wanted nothing more to, to be affiliated with the company and become an endorser. And it's because of the fact that I fell in love with the equipment so much that I wanted to be a part of the whole thing, you know, mm. the same as my heroes I'd be in, the, I wanted to be in the magazines and all that, you know, it's that kind of, and I, I've always like Pete said, I think people who say they don't get into it and want a bit of that, oh, I'm in the magazine, I'm in this, they're pro they are probably lying a wee little bit. There's a little bit of our ego because it's there, we need it for our playing and to move forward. That has to be there. Um, so for me, it was always, you know, wants to be part of the machine in, in a way. But, but I'd like to speak for the right reasons because I love the kit. I, I didn't like the, because you didn't have to be you know, Einstein to work out, you look in rhythm one month and then, you know, three months later, someone else has jumped to something else. And then you start to know some of the people in the business and they go, oh, yeah, he or she is, you know, 
you, she's a professional, he's a professional jumper. They'll do that for six months, then they'll go there, then they'll go there. But as you all said, on the, when you're going up, that's fine. But on the way back down, you have to wave at all those other people who are still stood there going, hi. <laughs> and they're knocking on the door saying, I'd love to use your gear again. It's like, nah. <laughs> and um, I'll, I'll, I must say, I, was I, wonder, I wonder who you could possibly be thinking of. <laughs> Oh, the list is quite long, isn't it? <laughs> um, and I, I, we mentioned when Ian was on, we mentioned Steve Gardner, who, who used to run Assembly Music in Bath, who also ran Sonor Drums distribution. Oh, yeah. Years yeah. back in the day. And he was a lovely man. And I've lost touch with him now. And I, I, I mean, Dave probably knows him as well from the visit in the shop back in the day. But what a legend. But you know what? I got to meet Bob Zildjian through him and a lot of different people when I was growing up because I was like the YTS boy at the shop. Um, and then I went to the warehouse to become a warehouse man and whatever. But I met all these great people. I used to go to Olympia as a little lad and just hang on their shirt tails. And um, I remember one thing I learned very quickly from all these people that I spoke to was not just the drum knowledge, but was the, the fact of what we're all saying is they, they used to say, Rob, we like to feel that the artist wants to play our equipment. You know, we don't care what they're doing, where they're playing. That's great because we've got other guys and girls that are doing that as well. But we want to make sure that they really want to be doing it for the right reasons. Um, and I remember that. And when I spoke to Dave at Hard Case as well, he's always looking after me. He's fantastic. People like there still have that. And Vulcan, I've just joined Symbols, and, and certainly Don and Dave have got it at DW and Scott and stuff. They've got that, fe that feeling that it's a family. They want you to be there for the right reason. And they will sniff you out if you're there just to get a deal and then you're going to jump ship to... Pearl or wherever else the next week you know they're not looking for that they're looking for the long game mm. and they want to establish a relationship with you and I know a lot of younger people when I tell them this at workshops and clinics they sort of go you're mad it's just for free gear isn't it and I'm like reset go away reset your um, mind to, or, you know, or madam you have to rethink the whole situation because you're never going to be right for any company with that mindset you know, uh, so that so they taught me very early on, and I've always respected that advice. So whenever I've worked with companies, if you look at my the tree of my stuff, it's always been with a, only a few companies throughout the whole thirty odd years, um, and I think that's a testament to that fact. You know that I respect that, and I want that back. And if you give it, you get it. Is what we've all just been saying. You know, right. Nice to say, couple couple of highs. Hi, Peter Station. You still watching? Mark Smith. Hello, Ben Millard. Uh, I've got some questions um, from Martin Ollie as well, Tom Lang, but I'm going to come to uh, Steve Grayson, hi, and Andriano. Um, hello, thanks for watching. Um, just going to come to Gordon Kerr, just basically what you just touched on, Rob. Yeah. Um, he says, is an endorsement really worthwhile? Surely for most people it's just a small saving in the cost of equipment, which is fine, but then you're tied to one manufacturer's gear with no freedom to use some something new and innovated by other manufacturers. Um, D Dave, can I just come to you first, first with that? Yeah, um, well, the, the, the first of, and most important thing is your sound. Uh, and you should only ever play gear that you're happy with. Not, you don't just play it because it's free or it's an endorsement or what have you. Um, uh, I, you know, I've, I've had drummers that very often, you know, I get somebody come to me and, and they say they want an endorsement and I'll say, my, almost my first question is, you know, do you play the gear? Yeah. Uh, and I will actually meet up with drummers and we'll try gear. Um, and sometimes it's just not right for them. It's not the sound that they're looking for. Mm. So um, assuming that, that it's the right sound, you know, what, what is it? What, I think the question is, you know, what do you get out of having an endorsement? Um, yeah, really so, worthwhile, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so obviously the support, uh, if, if you are a professional touring drummer, it is worth its weight in gold. Uh, and, you know, I don't want to go back over all the benefits of that, but it is very, very important, you know, for professional touring drummers to have that support um, and, and a sort of, knowledge that somebody's there in the background if something goes wrong and we, we can move quickly um, you know there's the, the credibility of being associated with a brand um, uh, obviously you know we, we you know we have large social media we do advertising uh, you know we put we put artists forward for drum festivals 
Um, and it's a plane alongside your heroes and, and peers. You know, if you play Gretsch, you know, Vinnie Colliuta uses Gretsch and Phil Collins and, you know, so many, you know, wonderful drummers. Rob Bryan, you know, plays DW, you want to be like Rob Bryan or Pete Cater, right. you know, plays... Absolutely, uh, absolutely you know, right. Those guys, yeah. Um, so, you know, you're, we mentioned the family thing. So if you're in Dorsey, you know, we can introduce you to other in Dorsey's. Um, you can help, as, as Rob mentioned, you know, you can help with R&D. Uh, you know, we, we're always open to, you know, ideas from our artists. Uh, and when we're developing things, you know, we'll send things to our endorsees to play, which is, you know, very, very exclusive. Um, I'm actually so, talking, with, sorry, Dave, I was just going to say, Don yeah. is like the, him and, you know, Don and John are the, the, and you would think they'd have no time. But I message um, Don frequently about snare drums and stuff. Right. You know, and, and he's always coming back. He doesn't sort of say, I've got no time for this. You know, we're going to talk to Jim Kelton or someone else. He's like, Rob, what's your ideas? You know, and, and so you're, I just want to jump in on that because you're absolutely right. You know, Don will answer you and he comes back and he's going to send me some stuff to try and say, Rob, is this right? And I'm thinking that's coming from Don Lombardi. You should be telling me, not the other way around, you know. And yeah. that's, that's, uh, well, that's, that's, that's how DW run their company. It is a family run company. Uh, and you can talk to you know Don or John or Scott Donnell or or me. Uh, it's it's very much a, an an open door. Yeah. Uh, and of course, you know, there's all the benefits. Like you know, I like I said, I you know, once once you have an endorsement, we, we will come out to concerts. You know, I come and take photos. Um, so, so I mean, hopefully, you'll see that there's actually quite a lot of benefits. Dave, just, just to jump in there, sorry, um, is there different levels of uh, endorsements? Because obviously, you know, your Vinnie Calutas, obviously they're going to get, you know, most probably slightly, you know, the, the biggest endorsements. And there may be like your guys, I don't know, so they endorse, but obviously they're not as like, the biggest name. Is there different levels of endorsements that Absolutely. you get? Because obviously yes. you get it's like free kits for this, or do you get free kit, or you get X amount of money off this or other? Is this... Yeah, uh, no, I, I mean, we have... Three, three levels of endorsements. Um, the we have uh, the platinum level, which is very very few artists, uh, and they will get free gear. Um, and even, even then, it's on a case by case basis. Um, and then you know the next level down, the gold level, uh, you're talking probably one free kit, and then there afterwards, gear would be purchased. Uh, and then the silver level, actually the majority of artists uh, are on a silver level and they buy gear. Right. Um, is that a discounted rate or is that a special rate for them? Or? It's an artist price. Right. So, you know, it, it is, it's pretty much a, a cost price, basically. We, you know, we don't make, we don't aim to make money on that. Uh, so we're helping the artists, um, obviously, with, with cheaper gear. But... If you think if you're thinking that an endorsement is about getting cheaper gear or free gear, you, you're really thinking about it in the wrong way. Um, the support and all the other benefits that I mentioned is far more valuable than actually getting money off the gear or even a free kit. Mm. Uh, if you're doing an international tour, uh, we could literally save the tour tens, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds by the band not having to ship a kit around the world. There we are. It's, it's, the other part of the question was, um, are you free uh, to sort of try out basically sort of different manufacturers for new innovative, uh, you know, products that's coming out? Do, um, well, just come to Pete for a second. Uh, do um, British Drum Company, do they allow you to lose other innovative stuff um, or drums wise? Uh, honestly, it's not really an issue for me. I, I, I do chop and change around one or two different vintage snare drums for you know very specific applications. Mm -hmm. um, but you know the, uh, the the drums that they uh, have made for me uh, feel exactly like the kind of drums that uh, a player like me wants to be using, and. and it, Again, it's rapport. Again, and it and it's another important word, which is integrity. Um, and you know, I play these drums because you know they feel right to me. They they sound 
they respond, they behave in the way that I want. I can think of you know, certain household name brands of drums. Um, I mean, you know, they probably, I probably wouldn't even want me on their roster, but I can think of a, a couple of brands. And, you know, I, in one instance, uh, the, the, uh, the, the UK guy for this drum company is, a, is one of the greatest guys in the industry. But I just wouldn't play those drums because the character of the instrument is just so far removed from what I, I need from a set of drums that I wouldn't play it. And, you know, I love the guy. And whenever I see him, we always have a great laugh. Uh, and, but I, I know I'm never going to play that brand of drums um, because they're, they're, they're just, you know, they're not the, the kind of instrument that a player like me is going to be seeking to use. And, 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 and in a way, I feel that, in, 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 I don't want to kind of um, uh, toot my own horn here, uh, but in a way, I feel I'm showing them respect by, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying, we will have a, a drink and a laugh whenever I see them at a drum show, but I'm not trying to hustle my way onto their roster. I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm with them because I like it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. their instruments are never going to be my choice. Yeah. Yeah. Pete, I think you're, I th Pete, I think you're absolutely right. If you're an endorsee, actually you're an ambassador and you should be proud to play the gear. Yeah. Um, I, I, know the, I know the question was, you know, do you allow people to play other gear? Um, um, I mean, we all know in the studio, you know, the, the, the producer will say, well, you know, try this sound, that sound. Um, but as long as, you know, in terms of if you're doing visible concerts or TV shows or promotions, um, really you should be representing the brand and proud to yeah. represent you're, a, you're an ambassador, which is exactly what you're saying. Yeah. 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 There, there, are cer there are certain times and certain circumstances uh, and, and the, uh, the, the, the two that really... Uh, spring to mind most readily for me are some of the jazz clubs in the centre of London where they have their own house drums right. and they're not the brands I would, would choose to play but they're scrupulously well maintained you know they've got three bass drums uh, three rack toms and three floor toms and a whole range of snare drums and you, you just turn up and they say do you want the, the 18, the 20 or the 22 uh, and, and whatever and because I can't afford to drive my car into the center of London anymore. You know, well, I, I, I park five tube stops out and go on, go in on the tube with my cymbals. Uh, Cause you know, to be doing a Sunday lunchtime at Ronnie Scott's, yeah. I, I, you know, I, ca I can't be dipping in my pocket for like congestion charge, which is now seven days a week and low emission zone charges. Cause it's just knocking a hole in the fee and I can't sustain it. Uh, yeah. But if, if somebody said to me, okay, we're doing a television show at Ronnie's, I would be taking the British Drum Company drums and I'd probably be paying one of the cartridge people to take them there for me and bring them back. Right. Um, and ho ho hopefully maybe getting the producer to at least help out with the cost. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, where, where, where there's profile on right. the instrument, you know, I'm using, I'm using these. Yeah. I hope that's answered your question, Gordon. Um, let's go to some other questions. Before you uh, do that, can I can I can I just can I just correct something I said earlier on, uh, just in do. case? Yes. Because I, I actually told a lie earlier oh, in the program. No, uh, guys. It, 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 it has reference to uh, my affiliation with Slingerland when I was 18 years old. That and it, I, I've forgotten all about it. But when I was 16, I had a very brief affiliation with a brand of drums called EMI Hammer. They were made in the Premier factory and they were marketed by Rossetti. And I actually played them uh, at the music trade fair at Olympia in 1979. Wow. <laughs> it's like, it's like, you know, it's nearly a whole lifetime ago. And, 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 and the great thing about it is there's no evidence. There's no recordings, there's no film, there's no photographs anywhere. Um, and, and, and they, they, sent, they, sent, they sent a set of drums, it was, it was two up and two down. So I immediately took the right hand uh, rack tom and put it to one side. They said, oh no, we want you to play two times on it. So my ride's over here and it's really not comfortable at all. So yeah, yeah that was, 
EMI Hammer was my first ever. Um, Never. It's not ever. got any recording part from now because it's going to be on the internet forever. <laughs> uh, so, um, Martin Olive actually said, as well as an endorsement, it must be also a great honour for a company to name a kit after you uh, as, as well. I remember the Kenny Clare kit made by Premier, for instance. It, obviously, it is a great honour. Obviously, you've got to that kind of stature in life that you got, you know, because I suppose it's like with the. Um, with the Kenny Clare, it was just like it was innovating, wasn't it? Trying to basically, it's like you know, what they could do with the drum kit, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, DW doesn't really do signature products. Um, in the last few years, we've done something for charity, which we call the Icon Snare Drums. Um, and you know, there's been sort of Neil Peart and Roger Taylor and, and, and uh, Mick Fleetwood. Yeah. Um, but they don't really do signature products. Um, and Gretsch is pretty much the same. They did do some signature snare drums for a while, but they've now been discontinued. Um, they've just done something with Mike Johnston, actually, but it's not called the Mike Johnston snare. Um, so Latin percussion is different, actually. There's, there's a few signature products. So it depends on the brand. Yeah, well, we've obviously got to say that's obviously part of your sort of LP percussion. Of and so last week we um we had Pete Lockett on. Yes, obviously he, who's come over to you within the uh, last couple of years, hasn't he, for LP as well? Yeah, and, and he's it's... W as well, isn't he? So he's he's, he's all on virtually under one roof now, isn't he? So <laughs> yes, um, which is great. Uh, and he's uh, I know he's done a lot of. Uh, uh, innovation in, in different so I think he's got his own set of um, was it remix kind of like uh, rattan kind of brushes out with with Vic Firth and stuff like that. So um, yeah. Pete's, Pete's really is like pushing stuff in the percussion, which is great. Uh, just just to mention for other people who have been watching, uh, other is like endorse uh, you know that that Dave looked after obviously apart from Rob and then obviously Pete. Obviously Daisy Palmer who is obviously was one of our second people on. Um, she, she's day, uh, Dave look after Daisy as well. Um, so, you know, so it's, it's all that kind of like, you know, we, we know so many people that Dave looks after. Um, and, and, one, and one of the questions was actually regarding that um, was uh, from Josh Holmes. He says, Dave, are there any drummers that you'd love to photograph but haven't had the chance yet? Oh, yes. One. One. Uh, and um, I, I have been working towards doing a third book. Uh, and there were sort of several drummers that I've always wanted to photograph. And one, uh, the, the ones that I photographed uh, that, you know, has been just such an honor. I photographed Charlie Watts um, fairly recently, uh, Phil Collins, Steve Gadd and Vinnie Colaiuta. Uh, but the one that was missing, and it absolutely pains me, um, 18 months, I've waited 10 years to photograph this guy, and 18 months ago, I, I saw my opportunity. Um, before I tell you who it is, can you guess? Yeah. Hang on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go on, have a guess. I'm Ringo. Ruin the story. He's going up to 80, isn't he, bless you. Right. Yeah. Ringo. Um, and I know Greg Bissonette. Um, and for some reason, Ringo hasn't played th this country in more than 10 years. No. And uh, 18 months ago, he announced a 25-day European tour, no dates in the UK. So I was that desperate to go and photograph him that I, I got Greg Bissonette to introduce me to management. Uh, and I, it was agreed I was going to go and photograph Ringo in Barcelona. And I booked my flight, I paid for my hotel, I had everything organized, and a week beforehand, management pulled the plug. And I, I lost the money on the hotel and <laughs> the play. And, um, and I never got to photograph Ringo. Um, and there is, there is another drummer as well, actually, uh, and that's Abe Laboreal, Julia. All right, yeah. Um, and I, I, I've had the pleasure of, uh, and honour of working with Abe, and he's such a nice guy. Um, but I, I think the contract he has with Paul McCartney is he's just not allowed to do that sort of thing. Oh, okay. Uh, and I met, I met Abe uh, about a year ago 
uh, and I just said, look, I'd love to come and photograph you. And he said, I'd love to do it, but you know, it's not up to me. No. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have photographed so many, you know, so many amazing drummers, but... Um, yeah, we've, we've been talking about your photographs and obviously your books, but um, obviously the, the, the other book is uh, from The Riser. Um, we need to, it's like, we need to know where can we get these books from uh, to purchase and see these awesome uh, photographs of, of drummers in there. Yes, in yeah. Uh, you, you will never see them. Um, well, particularly from my second book, From the Riser, it's, it's only, only available from my website, uh, which is www.music-images.co.uk. Um, and the first book, uh, which is Drummer's Perspective, um, actually, you can get that on Amazon. They're both available from from my website, uh, and I also do sign, sign copies as well. But um, uh, yeah, if you, if you Google them, um, you, you, my website should come up. So uh, it's, yeah, it's music-images.co.uk. There we go. So please, guys, they are fantastic books. I remember when I first met Dave many, many, many moons ago at the National Drum Fair. He said, "Can I come with my book?" And I said, "Really?" It's like I wow <laughs> look at that look at that kind of thing so yeah they are amazing but you put a lot of effort into it you know it, it's a it's a love to do these kind of things but obviously um yes. once you yeah. want to see it obviously you know and if he gets enough money then to raise from those ones you, you get the third book so that's what we need guys because obviously uh, uh you want to see the photos and you'd want the third book to happen so uh it's nearly there i believe isn't it dave so Yes, it, I mean I fund it myself, uh, and they, it, it's it costs a lot of money to do, uh, really serious money. But uh, actually, I think you, you actually you summed it up there, Matt. It's you know I don't do it as a money making exercise. I, I do it because you know I love pay, taking photos of drummers, uh, and I think it helps drummers to raise the profile yeah. because you know how many books are there on, on drummers out there? Coffee table books. That there's very very few, um, uh, and in fact, somebody said to me, uh, which kind of really hit hit home. They said, you know, in a hundred years' time, my books will be uh, the historical dr documents right. of drummers of now. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, because the thing is, if you think about, because so, obviously we mentioned the um, the books uh, very early on, it's like uh, uh, the drumming men books. Um, you know, they, they are you know they're documented by uh, personal um, um, interviews and all kind of stuff and experiences. Um, but obviously, the documentation we have these days with photographs, obviously the famous phrase is, uh, you know, picture speaks a thousand words. Right. Yeah. Um, and so with, with that kind of, with that kind of is that they are going to be, you know, I'd like, you know, if, you know, when my son comes to me, go, Oh, I went, went to a, a virtual library. Most probably be about then when I'm, you know, old in my wheelchair and wheeling me to my site, to my snare. Um, you know, it's like they go online. It's like, you can see all these amazing, Oh, did, did you know this guy back in 19? So it's like, well, yes, we did kind of thing. Um, yeah. so they are absolutely fantastic. And please don't keep, keep carrying on if you can, uh, <laughs> because they are the documentation of, of our, of our instrument in this modern day. Uh, again, I said that as a, I was chuffed to bitch to get my name in the front of the riser book. So there we are. Um, brilliant. So obviously she's bought that book. Um, um, Tom Bradley, hello, Tom. Um, Tom, yeah, he's, he's um, See you later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, so it's fantastic. Um, we, I, I've noticed we're actually we're, again every single week it seems to basically fly past, just like the weeks, to be honest. Um, we've only got 10 minutes left, but um, it guys. If you want to get your questions in, uh, or if you've got any experiences with anything regarding uh, what we've discussed this evening, if you've basically just logged on now, you've missed a load, but you can actually watch it 24 hours um, after basically we, we ended the show uh, on my YouTube site. Um, just type in Matt Green Drums and you go to the YouTube site and you see everyone there. So you see all the past ones. Uh, you'll also see the PD Countdown on there as well uh, with all of the guests uh, and other guests that haven't been on yet. Um, got plenty of time uh, to get these guys on um, but go to the YouTube site uh, and you can watch them whenever you want as well again they are on the Facebook page as well but they're all together in one place on the on the Facebook so just type into YouTube Matt Green drums and it will come up straight away for you um, uh, just one more question I think everyone's absolutely dying to know this uh, and 
it's uh, let me just find it again. Yeah, um, it's it's one of those where I suppose it's the current situation as we are. Um, and uh, Dave and I had a little chat before we came on, so I, I know we'll, we'll answer this one. But um, for everyone out there. Um, Tom Lane's actually put, uh, how is Dave coping with this pandemic situation with the music industry in its current status? Uh, gr great question. Um, it's, it's brutal. It is absolutely, my job has literally just stopped. Uh, 15th, I can tell you the exact day, it was the 15th of March. Uh, I was out with um, Brad Webb with Jamie Cullum. Uh, and the next day, they, Jamie cancelled the, the tour and my job stopped. Mm. And I've just seen my diary for the rest of the year just fall away. Yeah. Uh, and in all honesty, I don't think there's going to be any live music whatsoever this year. Not more than, actually, I, just, I think maybe smaller clubs, maybe smaller venues, it might, there might be a way of bringing it back. But the big festivals, the big arenas, um, you know, 500 plus capacity places, um, it's hard to see a way through. Uh, and it's killing, you know, the jobs and livelihoods of so many people. Um, you know, the, the venues, the security, the techs, you know, or the back line. I mean, there's tens of, even probably hundreds of thousands of people. So, yeah, I'll be honest, I'm finding it really tough. Um, I have another side to my job, which is I handle the PR for all the DW brands. Um, and, you know, in a time where we want to keep a positive message out, uh, actually that I've been, thank God, that's given me, you know, something to do and, and you know, it's important for the company. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's very tough. Uh, not just for me, but for all the musicians and, and bands out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what is um, what are the companies? Was was DW Family um, and obviously the umbrella, uh, they, the the, uh, the drums and instruments they own. What are they doing at the moment? They just literally just trying to, as I say, you, you give them positive vibes. But are they trying to rally up sales, or are they trying to do something else, or are they just just literally just trying to increase awareness or um, well, uh, I mean, the first thing I'd say is obviously all the shops shut. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, and especially with brands like Gretsch and DW and LP, you, these are expensive instruments. So not so easy to sell online. You know, I just, you know, would you, uh, you know, would you go and buy a kit without trying it is what, what I'm saying. Um, the, the, the flip side of that is actually internet sales have gone through the roof. Uh, so the company is, you know, the company has been functioning obviously on a lot lower level. Um, the factory is, has been shut for obviously, you know, three months. They are slowly getting it back up and running, finding a new way of working with, you know, social distancing. It, it's not easy, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, people do still want drums and, you know, it, you know it, and that's always going to be the case. But it, it is tough right now. And uh, now the shops have opened up. Uh, you know, I'm getting messages. I saw one from Wembley Drum the other day and Sound Attack. Uh, and, you know, they're keen to sort of, you know, get, their, get people in and, you know, get back to normality. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's key for a lot of people. It's that normality, isn't it? Because yes. Uh, um, oh, hello, Bill Sanders. Uh, is watching. Uh, I hope you join your fish and chips. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's the case where you know some some drum manufacturers seem to be booming because obviously uh, people have got time and everything else. I say, you know, talking about Bill Sanders, you know, you couldn't actually uh, time that any better. He, he's 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 shoring through the roof because obviously you know that whole practice situation. Right practice side of it. Uh, I, I think a lot of electrical stuff is, has gone through the roof as well. Um, but I, I still, I, so I've been talking to people and they're sort of messaging people all the time, uh, asking me stuff. And I do know people actually have been actually buying kits as well. Um, because um, situations, you know, dare I say that, you know, 
in this time of sort of maybe we, we can't actually spend anything at the moment because there's nothing to spend on. So I, I, I filled my car up the other week, um, and that was the first time since March. So I haven't had a foot to fulfill right. meal for about three months. And it's like people have filled it up with what? Filled it up with drums. <laughs> well, but, yeah, I could fill up with drums and then fill it out again. It's like, you know, it's just like, you know, I'm just going to fill it in. It's like, stand in the car. Put them all in. Take them all out again. Yeah, well, I, told, I actually went for a four-hour drive and then came back again because Mrs., you know, just your missus were missing me going away, I think. That's what it was. Well, uh, I, I, went, I, went, I went and sat in a traffic jam on the M25 for two hours just to... Just because I was missing yeah. it so much. Yeah, set off two hours before you need to actually set off and actually be late at a place. That's what I tried to do. <laughs> um, so, um, but no, it's to say, you know, it's like, but could people are buying because they've actually got that, that money now. And so obviously they're looking to the future, aren't they? So like when they can, then they'll have these lovely drums that have all the symbols, you know, whatever they're actually buying at the time, which I think is great because the thing is you've got to remember, these companies don't, you know, they're there. But they obviously they do build stuff. They do need people to purchase, and you know, and it's people like you guys actually, you know, to keep the fantastic names in the industries going um, because we need your support. It, music needs your support, but remember these industries as well. Um, you know, things are coming out. Evolution, uh, revolutionary, evolutionary, whatever one you call it, uh, you know, coming out. And so it's you know, it's fantastic. Um, you know, but it's that kind of thing that if we're not supporting live music or was at the industries like you know manufacturers and stuff like throughout the whole kind of i suppose the process you know of, of how we live um w when we come to the situation where we all be able to do all these kind of stuff they won't be there so please support all the, everything that um you know these guys you know the manufacturers whoever they are if it's dw if it's great if it's british drum company you know all the great ones as well um as well as, as you know what we just mentioned um there's so many it's, it's choices 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 but there only be choices 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 if you go and actually choose them um a couple of uh quick ones um uh what was it um uh, oh, there's, there's lots of happy birthdays, Rob. Uh, you'll be well, pleased. thank you. Yeah, happy, happy birthdays. Uh, I've just noticed the time as well. Um, it's been a fantastic evening, guys. Um, so um, can you just say your website once more, Dave, to buy the, the two books at the moment, please? Yeah, it's, it's www.music-images.co.uk. There we go. So um, if, if you've missed that, just literally type in drummers, photos, uh, books, uh, you may get there, you'd be absolutely... Well, I think if you put my name in, talk to David Phillips, drummers, it, it comes up. So There we go, well, there we go. Um, hi, hi, cats watching as well. Uh, again, oh, oh, bless you, it's like, so sad that live music's suffering so much. Cannot wait both to play and watch each other. Well, they are, but I think the greatest thing about this thing at the moment, so like, this is what this has developed from, is that there are things that you can actually get involved in, um, including uh, next Thursday's, um, which is the 2nd uh, of July, just after Rob's big birthday, which is on the 1st of July. Uh, well done. Um, we are doing another online masterclass, uh, Flat Flam to Your Friends. Um, it'll be a great one, actually. It's a, lots and lots of fun uh, in, in the flams, and actually it's like, you know, practice pad and actually how to transfer on a kit all you have to do basically just go to the events uh, on the Facebook uh, page of the Palace Drum Clinic uh, and just basically put going and then I'll be in touch with you with all the details that you need um, so it's it's been an absolute pleasure guys um, Dave thank you very much for your insights um, we'd love to see all the sort of the big sort of posters of all your backstage passes but I, I've seen lots of photos uh, and also seen you know sort of Facebook stuff of Dave's and all these backstage parties and everything else so Hopefully, when we get back out, we have a third book if you buy number one and two first. So there we go. So we can get the third book there. Um, so big thank you very much, Dave, for, for um, joining us on the PD Chat Show. Again, thanks for my regular Panamount members. Um, as you can tell, um, wealth of knowledge. Um, I would be lost without these two. So thank you again to Mr. Pete Cater and Mr. Rob Bryan. Uh, in thank you your last, uh, half week of uh, In Your 40s. Um, and <laughs> this week, um, just to say who's coming on next week, we have, um, I suppose we can only describe him as a, a prod god, uh, because that's how he's been described in many a magazine, and also been indained in, in into so like the um, loads and loads of halls of fame. We have uh, Cole Palmer coming on next week, uh, so that'll be the 4th of July, which is Independence Day um, for many in this state. Should, should, should have got Jim Chapin. 
But yeah, exactly. Well, Jim, bless him. Uh, we'll, we'll probably discuss that about this. But yeah, so at Independence Day, Mr. Jim Chapin uh, actually died in Independence Day, and he was the father of Independence. So um, it's a very special day for drumming uh, in total. Uh, obviously, guys, the pubs are opening theoretically next week, um, but I don't think there's any better place then really to be here because you're social distance you won't catch anything apart from the bug that is drum so the 4th of <laughs> july next week that is a half half eight uh with uh cole palmer and again my my uh fantastic panel uh because obviously they are fantastic so thanks again to rob and pete and again our special guest dave thank you very much for joining us uh, just to read a few things. So thanks again, gentlemen. Another superb evening. I would love to still be in my forties, Rob. Um, uh, I am. I'll be saying that next week. Yeah, <laughs> crying it. I think. Uh, great night, guys. Really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks for this. Uh, lots of ways. Thank you, guys, for watching. Because obviously, we couldn't do this without you. Uh, so we'll see you um, next week um, at uh, at eight thirty on the fourth of July with Carl Palmer. Um, but if you want to come and join the uh, the master class, which is on the second, uh, just do uh, just basically go to the Facebook page and basically go click to go in. So thanks again once some more, guys. Uh, you take care, and we'll see you next week. So it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from them. Take care, everyone. Good night. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me.